Chapter 26, Abdominal Emergencies. First, let's do a little refresher on the abdominal cavity. It contains lots of different organs supporting many different systems of the body. Uh, the problem we run into when trying to assess the extent of injury is remembering what organ is where and understanding how deep each organ lays. And so we got lots of potential in there, so we got to be careful. Um, good, solid assessment, good question taking, um, and trying to figure out what the problem may be. The specific diagnosis is sometimes elusive. The, the one thing that we do not have access to pre-hospital that would help us is ultrasound. That's something that may be in your future, but right now it's not there. So the abdominal cavity is between the diaphragm and the pelvis, so it's pretty good good sized uh, body structure there and it's uh, got major organs for the digestive system, reproductive system, endocrine system, and regulatory, how we manage the uh, functions of the body. So it's important to remember where the solid organs are versus the hollow organs. So we've got the solid organs, the spleen, the liver, the pancreas, and the kidneys kidneys being retroperitoneal, but uh, still in the abdominal area. Then you've got the hollow organs, which would be the stomach, the gallbladder, the duodenum, large intestine, the small intestine, bladder, and th those are your major functions. So you need to remember where each one is and what its function is and what it, whether it's solid or, hard, uh, solid or hollow. We have the four quadrants, right upper, right left upper, left lower, right lower. These are our mapping coordinates so we can kind of describe where the pain is and narrow it down. Sometimes uh, organs aren't in the right places, sometimes they're moved around, sometimes they're on the edge or they're getting referred pain to other parts. So we get a starting point but sometimes it's not the absolute answer for us. Just a reminder of how we divide the organs or divide the quadrants. You've got the diaphragm at the top, pelvis at the bottom, then you got the umbilicus for your upper and lower and right and left. The organs of the abdominal cavity, you got the peritoneum. That is that thin uh, membrane that kind of holds all the pieces together. So if it, it keeps everything in place so it doesn't bounce around. You got the parietal membrane, which is attached to the abdominal wall. And you got the visceral, which covers the organs. It's kind of like in the lungs. You've got the... Uh, the, the membrane on the inside of the ribs, and then you've got the membrane on the outside of the lungs. So similar process going on here. Most of your organs are in the par uh, parietal peritoneum. Then you've got the kidneys, the pancreas, and part of the aorta or retroperitoneal. So they're the behind that uh, space. The bladder and part of the rectum are inferior to the peritoneum, so they're out the bottom. Female reproductive organs, you've got the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and uterus, which kind of reside down there in the uh, abdominal cavity and lower quadrants. Then you got the large blood vessels. you got the aorta coming off the heart. you got the ascending and descending aorta. Descending goes through the abdominal cavity. Then you've got the inferior vena cava, which is the vein that goes back up to the heart. Hepatic artery, which goes to the liver, the splenic artery which goes to the spleen, and the iliac artery and vein which goes down through the pelvis. It divides out into the femoral arteries and veins and down the legs from there. Cross-section of what the uh, body looks like showing where the uh, kidneys and the pancreas are retroperitoneal. Back in here you've got part of the aorta and then it goes down and comes back into the pelvis area. So here is your peritoneal lining. So then the uterus, the rectum, uh, and part of the uh, fallopian tubes are on the outside. So that kind of gives you an idea of where things are. So abdominal pain and discomfort. Visceral pain usually the organs themselves so you've got a stomach ache uh, a liver pain pancreatitis they come right from the organ itself 
because organs do not have nerve endings, they have uh, uh, sensory, or not not uh, sensory uh, function nerves, but they don't have sensory nerves. So you don't have that uh, direct feeling. It's going to be a dull, achy pain. So it's pretty diffuse. So liver pain will be all across the upper quadrants because you can't narrow it down because you don't have the sensory uh, capabilities. They're intermittent, cramping, crampy. Uh, those are the hollow organs. Persistent ones are the solid organs. So like uh, you eat that bad burrito that you had sitting on your desk for two days and you get that crampy intermittent feeling in the intestines as it's telling you that it's not happy with you. That's what we're talking about for the uh, intermittent pain. That's a, sol a hollow organ. The consistent solid pain would be the uh, solid organs. Parietal pain is when you get the infection of the outside of the cavity there. So that, that's more intense pain because you've got nerve endings. You can actually feel it. So it's localized specific to a certain area. So they can point to a spot on their belly and say, here's where it hurts. Tearing pain. This is one that uh, when you hear them describe the pair, pain as something is ripping apart. That could be either the stomach or the aorta. The more dangerous portion thing that could be causing is the aortic aneurysm, where the walls of the muscle of the aorta are pulling apart as you have an expanding uh, uh, break in the aorta. It's making a, a balloon on the on the aorta itself, and then eventually it bursts. That is a problem for us. That uh, is one of those that bleeds out within minutes. And if you're not in surgery within those first few minutes, they typically die. Uh, ulcers in the stomach are going to use that feeling of tearing as they uh, kind of pull apart or you get some, uh, uh, your stretching of the stomach muscle. Referred pain. We've talked about this with the cardiac. The nerve endings pick up a signal of pain and it can't narrow it down to a certain body part. So you may feel pain in your lower left, lower right quadrant, but the nerve path doesn't isolate it to the lower right. It picks it up and takes it through the whole body. So you may have shoulder pain at the same time. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not that the, the pain is originating from the shoulder, but the nerve ending goes through that. So some abdominal conditions we're going to run into. Appendicitis, lower right quadrant, uh, somewhere around the umbilical region, region to the right. Kind of depends on uh, if the first question is, have you, have, you, have you ever had appendicitis and did they take it out? If they've taken the appendix out, then you can rule it out pretty easy. Um, they typically have nausea and vomiting. Their body positioning, they will be in the uh, fetal position trying to pull their legs up to take the pressure off the abdominal muscles. If it gets uh, better suddenly, it's possible that it ruptured and then they have the uh, potential for infection because of the uh, content of the uh, appendix that's going to be spreading throughout the abdominal cavity. But uh, it, it starts out as severe pain in the lower right quadrant. Peritonitis. Some foreign substance in the peritoneal space, maybe they had an ulcer leaked or they've got an infection, something caused an irritation to the parietal uh, peritoneum. They have involuntary contractions of the abdominal muscles. It's rigid. You push on it and it's super, super firm gut. And it's not one that just, they've just been doing hip hop abs and got a really firm abdominal muscle. It's, it's rock solid. Uh, cholecystitis or gallstones, inflammation of the gallbladder, they get the uh, blockage, they get that uh, fatty, or uh, they have a hard time digesting fatty foods. This gall is used for the digestive system to break down the fat. So they have upper right quadrant pain or epigastric pain. And this is one that's referred to the shoulder sometimes. So it kind of kind of mimics um, or it, it causes that referred pain for us. Pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas. This is uh, cr uh, common in chronic alcohol abusers. Epigras epigastric pain and uh, goes to the back and the shoulder also. So you get that uh, pancreas is retroperitoneal. Remember that it's on the uh, center of the back. Gastrointestinal bleeding. Some type of bleeding in the esophagus, between the esophagus and the rectum. Uh, it could be from 
ingesting a foreign object or uh, some type of uh, any other substance that goes into the body could be uh, an ulcer or some type of uh, some type of tumor or something like that. The problem uh, when we have that uh, bleeding, if it's bright red, it's typically fresh. If it's uh, dark red or coffee ground looking uh, in the vomit, it's uh, been digested some. And if they have uh, rectal bleeding that's dark red it, or black, it'll be black tarry looking and have a very specific odor to it. Things, uh, things you need to pay attention to. Dark, dark colored stool, maroon or black, tarry. It's real sticky and nasty and has a uh, very, very unique smell. Sometimes there's pain, sometimes they're not. So it kind of depends on where the bre the uh, bleeding's coming from. If they have nerve sensors in that area. There's the AAA, the abdominal aortic aneurysm. That's something we talked about. The bleeding or weakening of the wall of the aorta. Tears, it starts tearing apart the layers, and that's why they feel that terror, tearing feeling. Uh, as it breaks down the walls of the aorta, it fall, makes a bigger and bigger balloon and then eventually ruptures. Once it ruptures, then you've got a matter of minutes to get them to the hospital um, and actually get them into the hospital to surgery. So it's one of those uh, life and death transports. Usually have shocks. They probably don't have any pedal pulses, don't have any sensation below the waist because the blood vessel is not uh, intact. Hernia. As the uh, the walls of the abdominal cavity break down or they have a, a weak spot, the abdominal tissues will, or the organs will kind of slip through those holes underneath the skin. So you can have the intestines coming out underneath the skin so you'll see the what looks like intestines but covered with skin right at the, the, the uh, abdominal wall. It's, a lot of times it's because heavy lifting, they've got a weakness in the area and when they strain, they pull the muscles tight and it causes that to pop through. Do not uh, try to push it back through. It's, a, it's an emergency. You need to come to the hospital as quick as possible. If they get caught between the muscle, they can actually uh, have uh, tissue death because you get you lose sensation and uh, blood flow past that uh, the the breakage in the wall of the abdominal cavity where it's coming through. Sudden abdominal pain following lifting, you have that mass on the belly or the uh, crease of the groin. Guys will know this one because you get checked for it every time you go for athletic physical. They check for abdominal or a uh, uh, pertinent. Uh, Take, check for hernias. All right, renal colic, kidney stones. You have severe back or uh, flank pain, radiates to the groin, nausea, vomiting from the pain. It's not really impacting your digestive system. The pain is so severe. I've heard that passing a kidney stone is almost as bad as delivering a kid. I've never had one myself, but uh, um, I've seen lots of people that have, and I have lots of sympathy for them. One thing we've got to be aware of on abdominal pain is the potential that it may be a, a, a myocardial infarction. I've had a few patients that were having a very, very inferior MI, and because of the location on the heart, it was referring the pain to the upper epigastric region. So they were thinking it was abdominal pain when it was actually chest pain. So if you've got any concerns, treat them like a chest pain. Chest pain is more critical than abdominal pain. Get them to the hospital and get an ALS there so you can do the EKG and kind of rule things out. If the patient is of childbearing ages, then we have to be concerned of uh, some type of involvement of the female reproductive system. It's anywhere from eight years up. So ask the question, last menstrual cycle, any chance you could be pregnant? And that kind of helps you focus in on the potential for ectopic pregnancies or any other illnesses that could be associated with that. An ectopic pregnancy is when the uh, embryo is fertilized outside of the uterus. It will typically attach to the outside the fallopian tubes and as it does that it tears away the surface of the fallopian tube and causes severe bleeding and severe pain. 
So uh, we need to be very careful with those. All right, to the assessment side of abdominal, abdominal pain. Because there's so many causes, we're not sure where it's coming from. We're going to try to do a full secondary assessment. This is head to toe. Uh, you can focus on the gut, but you need to be aware that you want to check distally, check other body parts to see if there's anything else that could be involved here to kind of fit that differential diagnosis and rule things out. Here. So do a good scene size up. Look for vomit. Protect yourself from vomit. It's slippery. Don't step in it. Uh, be, pay, be prepared and uh, to describe the odors you smell when you walk into a scene. Uh, if you have blood in the urine or in the, in the fecal matter or the vomit, you'll definitely recognize the odor. It's something that's uh, it's one of those that's pretty bad. Um, and then pay attention to what else you see. Try to figure out what's going on around them. Primary assessment, most patients are conscious with abdominal pain, so you can get a good general impression, level of consciousness, make sure the airway is secured. Look for signs of shock. With abdominal injuries, you have a, a higher risk of bleeding. Uh, note the position of the patient. They are probably going to be in a, uh, in a supine or a, uh, a fetal position with the legs pulled up. Probably need some oxygen if they're hypoxic and uh, transport in the position of comfort. You need to get a lot of good questions in there. What happened? What were you doing when this started? Did you get the onset? Anything make it better or worse? How do you describe it? Is it sharp tearing? Is it dull achy? Is it a, a consistent pain? Where is it? Point on your belly where it hurts the most and where else you might feel pain. Scale of 1 to 10, pain being the worst. Uh, how long have you had the pain? Has it been changing have, as we've had the pain? If they're a female patient, you ask, uh, when was your last menstrual cycle? Are you late? Any bleeding or discharge? Any? Uh, can you describe the discharge? If you're having a menstrual cycle, how's your flow? Have you had a normal flow or is anything very different? Any tissue discharge? Have you had this pain before? If so, what did it, what was it? Some people that have ectopic pregnancies have possibility of uh, they've had them before. Is it possible you're pregnant? Are you using birth control and has it been effective? So you got a lot of questions to get out there. You need to get on a real cl uh, good, close relationship with your, part, your patients soon to get these questions and get the answer you want. And you might consider where you're asking the questions and who's around, because sometimes that may uh, influence the answers you get. Get your uh, rest of your sample history, your allergies, your medications, past pertinent history, last roll intake, and the events leading up to the emergency. Document everything you got there. Geriatrics are a little bit more difficult with abdominal pain. They've lost their ability to provide uh, good sensation. So you're going to have to uh, uh, do a little bit more probing questions and ask some, uh, some, some, uh, some good questions here. Get some good history. Uh, they could be life-threatening because they, they don't uh, present the pain as much as the uh, younger patients. So you may have other issues going on. Uh, look for uh, medications. Try to see if any of those are complicating. If they're on a blood thinner and got an ulcer, that could be a problem for us. Physical exam. First, you're going to look at it. You're going to look for distension. Is it protruding more than normal? Is it discolored? Do you see any uh, anything coming out from underneath the skin, that, uh, like uh, intestines or any... Uh, uh, hernias palpate you're going to uh, press the area that hurts last so if i say my lower right quadrant hurts last you're going to start upper left and you work your way down to that one you do not want to hit the the painful area first because then they're never going to let you touch anything again you're looking for the rigidity is it solid when you push on it do they have any pain or are they grimace are they hiding the pain from you are they tensing their muscles up so you can't push? That means they know there's going to be pain when you push. 
Get your baseline vitals, your pulse, respiration, blood pressure, skin temp, pulse ox, mental status. Document that well. Be aware that there's lots of potential causes here. Don't assume you got the right answer. Keep probing and trying to figure out uh, what might uh, be the cause. Look at the uh, airway constantly. If they're vomiting, make sure it's cleaned out so that you don't compromise the airway. Keep them calm. Um, and the other thing is don't give them anything by mouth. They're going to puke it back at you, and you don't want that. So be cautious when you're dealing with these patients. So protect the airway. Give them oxygen if they're hypoxic. Transport them in the left lateral recumbent position. That's laying on their left side facing you on the cot. Uh, and then transport to the appropriate facility. If, but when we talk about transport to the appropriate facility, know which area, which hospitals in your area accept what kind of patients. In Colorado Springs, Penrose, Maine, does not accept potential pregnant patients. So that would be a uh, decision point there for you. If you've got an ectopic pregnancy, you do not go to Penrose, Maine. You take those to St. Francis or uh, any of the UC Health hospitals. So with that, any questions, bring them to class. Let's talk about them and enjoy the evening. Thanks and have a great day.